How you doing? I'm Darren with Ash Kick and Barbecue. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today, we're talking tri-tip. Now, if you've never had tri-tip before, it's a very unique cut of meat. It actually uh, has a grain running two separate ways, so you're gonna wanna be paying attention to how you're gonna slice this at your end result, but we'll go over that later. Now, I did get this tri-tip from Wild Fork Foods. I'll go ahead and link them below, full discretion. This is not a paid video. I ordered this myself. I've actually never tried them before, but being in the Midwest, tri-tip is kind of hard for me to find, so in order to make sure I had one for this video, I did order it. I also did do a tri-tip video uh, earlier on on my channel here. I cooked it like a brisket. I've got to admit, I'm not a huge fan of cooking in that way. When it comes to steaks and beef in general, aside from brisket and beef ribs, I really prefer medium rare, medium at absolute most. So we're gonna be going for medium rare on this. We're gonna be cooking on the Pit Boss Pro Series 1600 today, and we're gonna be reverse searing this. So let's bring you in and show you exactly how we're gonna prep this tri-tip. Okay guys, I just wanna go ahead and show you the marbling in this tri-tip. It feels incredibly tender. It's very loose and floppy. It doesn't feel tight, but really nice marbling throughout this. We got a little bit of the fat cap back on here, but it came to me with the fat cap off, which I would remove it for reverse searing it anyways, because I want a nice crust on both sides of this tri-tip. If I was cooking it brisket style, I would leave that on to protect the meat, but we're gonna be reverse searing it today. and. So all I did was just come in and remove any of the hard fat and remove the silver skin. So that way we don't have any barriers for our smoke and our rub and we can get seasoning all throughout and get good flavor. And like I said, we're keeping this cook extremely simple today. We're just gonna be using Tailgater's Barbecue Party Rub, which is a wonderful, wonderful beef rub. And as you guys know, I love it on everything, especially beef. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the side that we have down just so we can keep our top side looking pretty. And we're just gonna go ahead and season this up. And I have had this sitting out for about 45 minutes to an hour just to get the chill off and let it come up to temp here. And this is a pretty big piece of meat, so you know, don't be afraid to go heavy with your rub. Obviously don't bury it if it's a salty rub, but this isn't too salty, it's very well balanced. So we're gonna give a nice coat on this. Go ahead and press that in. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. And then to get our sides, we can just go ahead and pick up the excess off the board here. Leave no seasoning behind. So we're gonna let this hang out while the cooker comes up to temp and I'll meet you guys outside when we're ready to get this on. All right guys, and before we get this out on the cooker, I do wanna go ahead and get a probe in this because I don't wanna overcook this piece of meat and we're shooting for a medium rare on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my probe in the thickest part of this thing, which looking at it, kind of appears to be about right here. So I'm just gonna kind of measure in and then go in this back side here. And that's looking pretty good. And obviously we'll be checking it with our Thermalworks MK4, but we're gonna be monitoring it with our Thermalworks Smoke. If you're interested in any of those products, I'll have links down below. So I just wanna get this in because I definitely do not wanna overcook this. One thing you will see here is, you know, it's a little bit thinner over here, a little bit thicker here, and then a little bit thicker here. So if you have someone who likes things a little bit more well done, maybe they can eat from this side of it. But then once we get here, and especially from here, it's a little bit thicker. So we're just gonna go ahead and monitor our temperatures because like I said, we want that medium rare for my reverse here. So we're probably gonna bring this up to about 120 degrees, pull it off, crank up our grill, and then sear it off. So let's meet you guys outside at the cooker. All right, you can see we have our tri-tip on. I have the thicker side towards the fire pot. That way we're not overcooking this side. I have my Thermalworks smoke cooked up. We're at 48.8 degrees. And I apologize for the background noise. I got a guy mowing, never fails. Every time I want to film, we got a ton of background noise, but we'll just suffer through it. And uh, got the Pit Boss Pro Series 1600 running at 250 degrees. And we're just gonna let this thing go until it hits 120 degrees. And then we'll come out and check on it. So we'll see you guys in and I'll let you know how long it's taken. Okay guys, it has been one hour exactly. Our tri-tip is reading 120 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get it in this pan, pull it off and let it rest. And I'm gonna crank up my grill here to high so we can get a good sear on it. So I'll bring you back when it's time to sear. Okay guys, we have our grill up to temp. These grill grates are reading about 550 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and spray them with a little bit of this duck fat here. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our tri-tip on. And all we're gonna do is just lay it across 
this way. And we're just going to push down on it so we have good contact. And we're going to let this go for one minute. Okay guys, so it's been about a minute. We're going to come on in. We're going to just pick this up. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Make sure we have some good contact there. I guess it's not quite about 90 degrees, but we want to get some good diamonds on this tri-tip. Make sure we have good contact here. And we're going to let that go for another minute. Alright guys, so it has been one minute. We're going to go ahead and flip our tri-tip and repeat the process on the other side. See we have some nice marks there. Those are looking good. We'll go ahead and just give it a press so we have good contact. I'll let her go for another minute. Alright guys, so it's been another minute. We're just going to go ahead and rotate this tri-tip and we'll let that go for another minute. All right, guys, so it's been another minute. We're going to go ahead and take a temp reading here. We're sitting at about 126 degrees, and that is perfect. So we're going to go ahead and get this off and get it into our pan. You can see that's looking really good. We're going to let it rest, and I will bring you back when it's time for the taste test. Okay guys, you can see we have our tri-tip here. We let it rest for about 10 minutes. Now one thing I will say is my grill marks didn't get as dark as I would like them to, and that's because I had them at 550 degrees. I typically like them at around 600 to 650 degrees. And also, we only seared them for about a minute. So that's why they're not as dark. Regardless, this is gonna be absolutely delicious and I can't wait to try it. Those cooking pellets, the smoke on here smells absolutely wonderful. Before we slice into it, I just wanna go ahead and show you my new board here. This is from my buddy John over at Hiawatha Woodworks out of Wisconsin. I'm gonna link this down below and I got a 20% off discount code for you, which is huge. This isn't a paid sponsorship or anything. This is just him sending me a board and this is Shag Hickory, it's 15 by 20 and it's double sided, which is really nice. You have a presentation side and you also have a cutting side. And on this cutting side, you have a three quarter inch juice groove all the way around and then a three inch well over here with a little area here for you to be able to pour your juice out should you wanna do that. So this is an absolutely beautiful board. I don't even wanna use it, but we're gonna because it's a cutting board. But thank you, John, for sending me this and be sure to check them out because his boards are absolutely awesome. I think I have four of them now and I did give one away for my 10K giveaway. So without further ado, let's go ahead and slice into this tri-tip and see how we did. I'm gonna bring you in and show you how it looks. So let's check it out. Okay guys, and before we slice into this, I just wanna show you, it might be hard to tell on camera, but you can see where the grain is running and you wanna be sure you slice against the grain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it in half and we're gonna see how it looks. We are going for a medium rare today. And I'd say that looks pretty good to me. A Little bit more on the rare side, but that's fine. That's exactly how I like it. Now, to slice this up, you wanna slice against the grain. So the grain's running this way. So we're just gonna go ahead and just start slicing. And like I said, on this side, it's gonna be a little bit more done. And that's great for people who enjoy that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and slice it up. See how it looks. Oh yeah, nice and juicy. Still a little bit more done down here than it was in the center, but that's still pretty close to a medium rare and I'll take that all day long. It's definitely not overcooked. So go ahead and get a few slices out of there. Now on this side here, it's kind of hard to tell, but the grain is running this way. So how you're gonna to wanna to slice this is against the grain. You're just gonna go through and take them down like that. And this is slicing really nice. It feels extremely tender and I can't wait to try this. And it looks really good. It may be hard to tell on camera the doneness that it usually is, but I'm very happy with this. This is something I'm gonna enjoy eating. So let's bring you out and let's jump in for a taste test. All right guys, and you can see here, that is looking absolutely delicious. It smells wonderful. Now we can kind of tell here the grain's starting to run this way. So if we're gonna go ahead and slice it, we're just gonna go back to starting over here and make sure we get a nice tender piece and just get this all sliced up. So, feels extremely tender. But I can't wait any longer. We gotta go ahead and try it. I'm gonna get me off a slice of this. Cheers. You guys, this is absolutely delicious. 
If you've never done reverse sear tri-tip before, I highly recommend it. The beefiness on it is absolutely wonderful. Like I said, just be sure you cook it to the doneness that you like. For me, that's medium rare to medium at most. This is more on the medium rare side, which I'm perfectly okay with. And then also make sure you're cutting against the grain. That's very important for you to get a tender bite. And I know a few of these weren't quite against the grain, but I caught it. And of course, got to make a little mistake while I'm filming. That's just how it goes. But you're going to have a much more tender chew if you cut against the grain, like with anything. So if you need to, take a picture of it before you season it and before you cook it. That way you can tell which way the grains are running. And just be mindful of that. Regardless, this is absolutely delicious. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, stay safe, and we will see you next time.